Hello guys, this is Alex Kolaskov, photographer who helped other photographers to achieve their goals. And uh, today I'm going to finish my test and review of uh, Alien Chrome Quadra Range RX Power Pack with two heads, two action heads. And uh, this test will be the most interesting because I'm going to compare uh, action, stopping action power of uh, Alien Chrome to Einstein's and the Bron Color, Bron Color Graphite uh, Pack with pulse of heads. And uh, if you've seen my previous test, you know how we, how I did it before, right? I was dropping um, subject in the liquid. I was dropping piece of acrylic ice, and it was creating um, this big boom splash. And uh, I was checking how uh, at different power levels that Alien Chrome uh, able to freeze or not to freeze the action. How much of motion blur uh, I'll be getting from that pack. And uh, like I said, I did it because I wanted to test two heads. Uh, it's not practical to use only one head. However, today I'm going to squeeze the maximum from this pack, okay, from Alien Chromes. So what I did is this. I got pack and connected only one head to outlet B. B is the fast. The maximum power on that outlet, even only when it's one head connected, only 132 watt second. Okay, so it's one third from 400 watt second, the maximum of that pack. And I also had, uh, have this head B uh, sitting right behind of this translucent plastic, right? Let me show you if you have any doubts. You see, it's sitting there just with regular reflector and it creates some spot, relatively large spot on the background. No other lights, okay? And uh, doing this, I'll be getting the shortest possible flash duration at given power level from that Alien Chrome Ranger Quadra RX power pack. Then I'm going to test Einstein, but we'll use two Einsteins, one on top, one behind, because it's good to have something on top uh, to create sparkles on the liquid. And same with Bron Color, okay? Because uh, was with Bron Color and uh, Einstein, it doesn't matter how many heads. Well, for brown color it does matter, but if it's two heads, it's okay. Three heads not gonna work because on brown color only two head uh, has that short flash duration. So the head when connected, it's just optimal color temperature mode. So there is no uh, a lot of freezing action with three heads, but we're gonna use two, okay? So as usual, setup is pretty simple. I have uh, glass sitting right here, okay? And I'm going to drop a piece of acrylic ice. It's artificial ice, and it looks really cool. Uh, let me show you uh, how it looks um, on the picture we just got. And you see only one light source, but everything is translucent, meaning we're getting a relatively nice picture with only one light. I have a projector and uh, the trigger, trigger trap trigger sitting here. And whatever I will drop, will trigger action just because it uh, interferes with the lighting beam which uh, hits the sensor on a trigger trap. Like I said before, I have uh, this part of the shot, of uh, liquid shot, uh, covered on um, uh, my previous workshop, so you can, you can always get and uh, look what's going on there. Camera. Camera is Hasselblad IH1 with uh, leaf aptus uh, back. But you see, I know uh, many of you guys may be thinking like, oh, you know, because I use Hasselblad, that's why, you know, it kind of freeze action and all that kind of stuff, because Hasselblad uh, can sync with uh, flash up to one of eight hundredth of a second. So, just to show you that camera has nothing to do with all that freezing uh, action stuff, it's only light, I'm going to set shutter speed to one of two hundredth of a second, okay? One of two hundredth of a second, it's most of the DSLRs uh, have it. And if I would say, uh, if I set shutter to, let's say, one of 100 of a second, it will be exactly the same result, okay? So I saw 50, one of 200 of a second, and I'm gonna change aperture depending on light power we're getting, just to get, you know, a relatively similar exposed, exposed picture, okay? And now it's F12. Of course, on any, on any liquid splash action, Deeper depth of field is better, okay? It's very important, and I always set as, I always close up, close aperture 
uh, as much as possible to get the deepest depth, depth of field. Because li liquid is flying, all these little droplets uh, tend to you know, run away from <laughs> the shooting area. And of course, uh, everything kind of, um, well, you need huge depths of field to catch everything in, in the focus, okay? So, let's do just a test shot, okay? The pack is on one third of its power, even though I set it to maximum, of course, but that's what it shows for head B. And uh, this is the shot. You see nothing is moving. So next step is to turn on uh, trigger trap and set it so it's going to trigger when I drop something. And you see, this time, this time I want to make sure that I'm getting a little bit faster flying droplets. And uh, to do this, I'm going to drop it, the ice, acrylic ice, from a little bit higher distance. OK, so I have this uh, the bracket, basically, and I set it to be exactly on top of our glass. In the glass, liquid with uh, well, water with some food coloring. OK, so we're going to drop it. So, OK, this time it went right and it looks like we had big splash. And yes, you see it. So 132 watt second power at ISO 50 and F12. Shutter speed doesn't play any role. Let's see what we're getting here. I see it's a little bit out of focus, some of the parts. And what I'm interested in to look at the flying droplets, at least to find something which would be more in focus than less, like this one. And I see, well, everything is pretty much frozen, right? And Elikron says in the manual that the shortest flash duration with head B only connected to outlet B is one of uh, 58 hundredth of a second. But I think it's on lowest power settings. Not sure about uh, the maximum. They don't specify at what power level. And uh, on previous shot, I've seen that sh uh, flash duration gets shorter when I lower power down. That's for most. Uh, uh, those, you know, new um, modern strobes, that's how it is. On old ones, it may be opposite, shorter flash duration at the maximum power level. But for new, it's like this. But I'm not going to test it at lowest power settings because it's not useful. There is no way uh, I can use it, let's say, in commercial photography uh, at um, F, well, at uh, 15 watt second, for example. What kind of ISO should I have and what kind of uh, aperture? We all set. So we see it's worked pretty well. Let me drop a few more times just to get a little bit more splashes. Maybe it will be um, several which you know will have a little bit more blue, blue or less. So we'll get uh, a little bit more. Okay. So what I'll be doing, I'm turning off, unplugging the camera so it won't trigger every time I stick something. And I have fixed our glass and uh, everything by using double-sided tape. That's how I ensure that uh, glass is not going to move when I drop something in it, because focus is very precise here. And I set focus basically on the middle of the glass. Okay? So let's try to shoot it once more. I'll try to do really careful. Okay. Let's see. The whole picture looked like this. And flying droplets. They're still out of focus. So you see F12, F12 on 120 millimeters macro lens, which I have uh, on that uh, level of magnification, is not really deep enough to get nice splash because even around the glass, we have some blur, okay? And it's not motion blur, oh, like this, relatively in the focus. And I don't see much of the blur. There is a little bit, okay? There is a little bit blur all around, but uh, in general, it works fine. So we can use 
Alien Chrome to, to freeze the action. Now let's put uh, Einstein's, pulse above Einstein's, okay? Okay, so now I got two Einstein, pulse above Einstein's in action mode. It's very important, of course, to freeze action, we need to set them on action mode, not on color constant mode. One is sits on top and one is behind. So now I set them to 150 watt second each. Okay, it's a little bit more than 130 on the pack, uh, on the Alien Chrome we have. And I'm, I'm not going to change aperture, okay? Uh, I just gonna shoot at uh, one of two hundred of a second f12 I saw 50 okay just to examine uh, how exposure will look like so it's much more light okay it's much more light uh, with uh, that Einstein again I have uh, that large nine inch reflector okay on Einstein sitting behind this uh, it of course throws more light than a little head, uh, little bronco, uh, sorry, little Allen Chrome head uh, with little reflector. Which, well, that's kind of uh, understandable, but plus we have a little bit more power. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to change aperture to create similar exposure. Okay, so let's say F18. Let's see how it looks like. Okay, it looks closer, but still a little bit too bright. So I'm going to F20, okay? Or even F22. Did I shoot myself? No? No. <laughs> okay. So we have uh, F22, and you know what? I think I'm going to move that light which sits behind a little bit further. I move it a little bit further back, so it creates larger spot, okay? Because now it's quite visible that the spot is smaller. And now, when we got this... Oh, I think I had myself between camera. No, it was fine. Okay, so let's see. Again, this is F23, which alone should give us better depth of field and better sharpness and, you know, a kind of better looking uh, droplets. And if you look at all these flying droplets, most of them are in focus. So you see how important to get more of depth of field on such shots. And I can tell that everything is frozen. Everything is really frozen. Uh, there is a little bit, a little bit of uh, motion blur. You just can tell by looking at uh, ages of these droplets. It's a little bit blurry, a little bit blurry. Of course, when you resize that image for web, it's kind of, it, nobody won't notice it because you sharpened it. When you print large prints, you know, or, you know, somebody will use it for advertisement again for billboards. Well, maybe not for billboards, but let's say a high resolution print on some magazine. This kind of thing may be visible or maybe not. It's, again, it's better to have much sharper uh, ages of each droplet. But, of course, it's quite acceptable, quite acceptable, so we're good here. Let's drop a few more times, and uh, I just want to make sure that we're getting uh, So let's make red is Allen Chrome, okay, then yellow it will be Einstein's and brown color of course will be blue so then we can compare those images uh, refill and very careful drop okay okay 
Okay, much more flying little pieces and usually smaller droplet has higher velocity uh, and uh, therefore it may be a little bit more blur on them. So I always like to check smaller droplets. But there is a blur, a little blur, and it still looks okay. So let's do this. Let's raise the bar. Let's raise the power output to 211 watt second. Okay, 211 watt second on each head. So it's 400 watt second hitting the subject, 420. And, and in this uh, power settings, it shows me flash duration of 1 of 3300. Okay, 1 of 3300. So I'm going to put it back. And uh, now it's time to switch. Well, it's time to shoot, actually, right? And before this, we're going to change aperture, okay? To too much new power level. So I'm going to set it F29, okay? I'm going to set it F29. And do the test again. Awesome. Big bada boom. Let's see what is going on here. Again, setting yellow for this and for this. Okay, it looks good here. It still looks pretty well for flying droplets. Uh, then let's let's go higher, okay? Let's go higher and we'll see. Because now it's at the age of Alien Chrome. Alien Chrome can shoot 400 uh, watt second total with both heads and we had it on previous shot. You've seen how it froze on action. And Einstein's a little bit better at this power level. Okay, because you see, we don't have uh, numbers from Alien Chromes at uh, full full power level with two speed heads, t point one time. We don't have that kind of flash duration. But looking at the images, we can tell that Einstein is a little better. But let's let's go higher. Let's go to three hundred. 20 watt second each head, okay? 320 watt second each head, and it gives us one of 2000 t.1 flash duration time, okay? So I'm going to again close down the aperture to f36, okay? Shutter speed, I'm not changing it, and it doesn't play any role here, okay? It's one of 200 of a second. Then we do this trick again. Why we may need to have such big power? And I can tell you that there are many, many situations when uh, such power may not even be enough uh, for, for liquid splash. Imagine that we'll be splashing something much larger on a larger scale and something not really transparent, not clear as a, uh, water, but it may be some latex paint or whatever. And uh, that's why we need a lot of power. So let's see if 640 watt second would be enough to stop action with one of 2,000 of a second t.1 time. Oh, thank you. It was right in my eyes and it didn't trigger anything. Let's do one more time. Please do this this time, okay? Awesome. Oh, <laughs> nice splash, right? Nice splash, and let's see. Okay. Now we see it's, it's much more of the motion blur. Okay. Everything looks kind of blurry, especially those little droplets which are outside of uh, the main splash. Main splash usually is fine because it's the slowest moving piece of that splash, okay? 
and uh, those little ones, especially you see, look look at this one, right? It's all blurry. Oh, do do do, it's blurry. It's really really blurry. Okay. So, what I can tell you, Einstein's at one of, uh, sorry, Einstein's at uh, 220 watt second. It's probably a little bit over the age of acceptance, at least for me. You still can freeze some stuff, but not much of it, okay? And to get a really good liquid shot, splash shot, you need shorter flash duration. I usually use Einstein at one of a thousand of a second. One of 35,000 of a second uh, flash duration, not slower, okay? But again, we see that it's possible to use them, right? So let's mark it yellow. And we remember, it was 300 watt second. And previous shot was 210 uh, watt second from each light. And this is what I would call kind of accept acceptable result, okay? And this is, I would call, not really acceptable result. So now time to use, to try to see how it will work with brown color, okay? Brown color, that big A, graphite A4 pack, right? Here it's sitting, and I'm going to use it to freeze some action. I'm going to review this pack much more closely. Uh, I'm still uh, getting some pieces uh, to it, and I'm going to evaluate uh, is it worse or not to go from Einstein's, let's say, to brown color, okay? Let me change the lights. Okay, guys, so now I installed uh, brown color. Two heads, right? One behind, one on top. Uh, that's pulls of heads. And uh, I'm going to run, and we'll see. Uh, I'm going to run the same test. It will be probably much more noise, because each head fence is uh, much noisy than Einstein's, and on Anelichrom's it's completely silent operation, right? But hopefully it should be fine. So, I'm going to set T1 time to be the minimum, okay? So, instead of optimal, there is two settings, optimal or minimum. Optimal meaning optimal duration for uh, constant color temperature, but in this case, we're interested in uh, shortest flash duration, so I put it minimum. And uh, we have two lamps, symmetrical distribution, kind of, I'm going to use symmetrically, right? Uh, just to match more with Einstein setup. And now each one set to 348 watt seconds. So let's go to lower it to 140. No, 132, okay? 132 watt second each head. And uh, it matches it matches the Allen Chrome. Right, Alien Chrome on this test with one head, uh, it was 132 watt second on it. So I set the same power, and the flash duration T.1 shows one of a thousand of a second. Okay, and uh, I'm going to run test just to make sure it's everything works fine. Then I'm going to check this device, the trigger. Yep, it looks fine, and we're going to drop. So. Three, two, one. I think it was some unusual splash. Oh, yeah. What I forgot, I forgot to change to F23, 22, let's say. And let's do the same, but well, <laughs> it's cool. And of course, we got something really frozen, but I want to bring the exposure to the same level, okay? So, let's drop something here. And we set in this to be blue, because it's brown color, right? 
let's see let's take a look at our little droplets so far at f22 i see really good result okay i see every even little one quite frozen there is little bit maybe a little bit of motion blur visible here but not much okay and i would say most of them really 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 frozen so now let's raise the power let's raise the power to oh no please don't do this i just gonna raise to 210 watt second okay 214 to be exact 214 watt second and i'm gonna set aperture to f29 so now it matches our second shot with einstein's right and i'm gonna repeat procedure okay and i can tell you that flash duration is one of three thousand of a second okay wow such a spectacular drops and there is a little bit of motion blur right it's a little bit more and i think some of them a little bit blurry by the way let me check the focus yeah i think it's in the focus yep but i think it kind of matches the einstein right and now uh, the maximum was 320 watt second for each Einstein, right? So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use trigger section. I'm going to, have to set 324 watt second, okay? And the flash duration is one of 2300 of a second, okay? That's what it shows on Broncolor. For reference, it was one of 2,000 of a second, so a little bit longer time uh, shown on Cyber Commander on the same power level, level 320 watt second uh, for Einstein's. So let's see. If it matches those numbers by what we will get on the picture or not. Okay. Okay. We got it this time, and uh, well, I didn't even close aperture down, which probably I will need to do. But let's see. Okay. So it's frozen. It's it has some motion blur. Let's compare it to the last shot we had with Einstein with the same power level. Okay let's see that was it right and if you're gonna compare it so i said just compare variant right the only difference is aperture here 29 f29 vs 20 36 And if you go on this, so what do, do you think? It's almost identical, and I think Broncolor has a little bit, a little bit advantage. Let me close down the aperture, okay? Close down the aperture, and uh, just to make it look the same. Exposure may be a little bit different, right? Exposure may be a little bit different just because light modifiers are a little bit different. But in general, it should be okay. So. Ugh. And again, 
this fine liquids, of course, uh, each one has different, every time it's different uh, speed, right, velocity of these droplets. And it's hard to compare saying, oh, you know, this freezes better than not because that particular uh, little droplet may just fly much faster on one of the shots, right? So I have this test in mind where I'm going to use a rotating disk, right? And uh, we'll try to freeze it. Uh, using brown color and Einstein's just to see uh, who will win the competition on freezing the action, right? And at what power level. But it will be uh, my more in-depth test for brown color, okay? Now I want just to keep it practical, completely practical. Let's just try to freeze uh, just regular droplets. So there is a motion blur. There is a motion blur on brown color and let's say let's do some crazy stuff let's uh, move even higher to higher okay let's shoot at one of uh, sorry at 500 watt second at 1500 flash duration okay just to see what will happen here okay Wow. Okay. Uh, I think I have a little problem there with the reflector because I kind of tried to fix the uh, pulsy bus reflector with the tape on, on the brown collar. I didn't get my reflectors yet. They hopefully are coming today but I want to finish this test before. So this is why we have a little bit less light here. But let's see uh, if it was able to freeze action or not. So most, in most cases, it's not. It's really not. Lots of power, right? Uh, but we have some blur at high velocity little droplets. But if, let's say we compare it to white lighting, if you're gonna set 500 watt second each light okay it will be one of 900 of a second and here it's one of 1500 of a second so that's where brown color started taking over Einstein's but you see guys for such price Einstein's is a really, really good choice, okay? Okay, so what's the conclusion? What did we learn uh, on this test? Well, I see that every light has its own strong sides and weak sides. And of course, Alien Chrome's Quadra RX, Ranger RX, is a great, great little performer. performer. It's little just by size and weight. It's a great pack to go outside and uh, to, to use in studio to freeze actions and uh, still it's not made for studio photographers uh, manufacturer didn't have it in mind I know those engineers who created pack so it's gonna will be used in studio but we always can utilize it features uh, when we need to occasionally you know freeze action of course if you on a limited budget and uh, you're gonna shoot some flying stuff liquids powder well anything you can imagine Einstein's is the best choice because for that money you're getting a lot of stopping power, action stopping power, you're getting a constant color mode, you're getting lots of features, but the drawback is build quality, lack of uh, professional light modifiers. I'm talking about, you know, stuff like optical light modifiers, which let's say for brown color you can find uh, and you can do wonders with that. It will be another video of uh, me reviewing brown color and uh, that time I'll show you what you can do, what crazy thing you can do with optical light modifiers on the brown color and uh, how to basically utilize them to, to get uh, some really, really creative stuff done, which is not possible to do with Einstein's. Of course, not just build quality, reliability. I have several Einstein's uh, which uh, was sent to factory and well, 
service, customer service of policy buff is great. I'm getting them almost like two days after that, I get them back in studio working uh, and uh, it's all covered by warranty. So it was great. However, uh, sometimes that's uh, not really useful when light stop working in the middle of the shot, okay? So every light will work the best. Just think about how you can utilize the most from the pack, well, not the pack, from the light you already have, okay? Just think about it creatively. Because I've been shooting, I start my liquid photography uh, and uh, action stopping, you know, things in studio with Canon speed lights. And I did great, amazing shots, which I, you know, I used them to attract customers because they look at my portfolio and they say, wow, man, this is just amazing. Of course, it was very short time when I could use speed lights for commercial shots. Almost, it, it's hard to get it, right? For, for your portfolio, you can use it, but not for uh, doing something real. But Einstein's, it's, it's really good. And then Broncolor, there is uh, Alien Chromes with short resolution. So variety is huge. Look at what you already have. Try to squeeze the maximum from it. Uh, know the limitation of your equipment, okay? Because sometimes, let's say, uh, white lighting or uh, Alien Bs. Alien B lighting, Alien B 400, 100 watt second, 160 watt second light. You know that you can freeze action with it using that, uh, high, how you call it, the uh, hypersync type of triggers. You can shoot with up to 8,000 of a second shutter speed with the slide and freeze the action. There are lots of limitations in this, but it's possible. You see, you can always raise ISO and uh, do, do the shot, especially if you're working on your portfolio, because this is, at least I invested myself the most of the time at the beginning, okay? At the beginning of my business, of my photography career. I was spending lots of time to fill portfolio with the best I could do, okay? Well, I'm talking, uh, about this on my uh, advanced product photography essential spec uh, i have that more than hour video of uh, when i explained uh, everything how we started how we attract customers how we fill portfolio everything so if you're interested you can always get it but i am telling you be creative use the maximum and know the maximum of your equipment and then move forward get the best you can buy for your money and use it again for the maximum okay so that was Alex Kolaskov. Stay tuned, guys. More stuff to come. Bye.